what I wanted to talk to you about is stuff that gets stuck in our body, you know, whether it's resentment, whether it's guilt, whether it's stuff we feel about anyone else, you know, you could be mad about someone from your past, you could be whatever, and anything that's stuck, imagine this for a second, imagine anything that's stuck is something, even if you think it's something they did, it's something in your body, like they're triggering something in your body that you haven't loved right? This is profound because you could be like, oh, there's an area where I haven't loved. And because we did this insane work over the weekend, um, I found that there was more of a place that I could access that could love more things that I've never let be loved, right? So like, for instance, like you're just feeling this anger towards someone, or you're feeling someone doesn't understand you, or you're feeling whatever. And then you just kind of bring love to it. And you go, I love that I learned this about that. I love that I learned this about myself. I love that I see that there's a part of me that is working so hard to be understood. And I just want to say to him, like, I see you, you're, you're doing such a good job. Just this process starts kind of the separation from the you that wants to fix everything to you breaking off of that and you bringing love to a character that's trying to fix everything. You know, if you feel judgment for someone, you feel anger at someone, whatever, you feel stuck in something, there's a character that feels stuck. And you have this amazing opportunity to get present and bring love to it. I want you to just imagine the power because love and letting go are the same energy, right? When you love someone, it releases things. So letting go cannot be let go through effort, right? Because the effort is what is being released. So as you get really present and you connect to the now, and if you were at Beyond Expansion, one of the things we did was we got so connected to the now and we noticed there was an energy that went through the walls and it goes through us now and it's right here. And it's up to me right now to use this and connect with this so much that where there's places where you think are about the outside. You're so pissed about a circumstance. You're pissed about something Biden did. You're pissed about whatever. You're just in this place where you notice that the energy that feels that is trapped energy that up until you get really good at observing, you think is you, but it's not you. All effort is not you. All effort is not you. It might be something that you're still using, but all I'm going to get over this that's the energy that needs to be released. And all it takes is getting present, allowing the presence to look at it, becoming the presence, right? Not the effort that transcends something. But do you have something that when you started this call could have been stuck in your body, up could have been your whole life up until now? And can you connect with the now? Can you connect with the space that's here? And imagine that instead of you being the stuck energy connecting to the space, you're actually the space, right? Like shift from being the stuck energy to being the space that looks at it. So you got to connect more to the space than the stuck energy, right? And that requires you to be here, not get to some outcome. That requires you to be, it's like this being thing feels like it's so much if like more nothing yet, it's so much more powerful than that force. Right. So Mona just said a fear of losing my parents. Now I want you to just find the energy that's scared to lose your parents. Cause that's a little girl. That's a history. Right. And take a deep breath in and just Notice the energy of the little girl is kind of trying to keep them here, right? Can you feel the, the little girl for anyone that's going to lose anyone or feels like they've lost someone, whether it's through a breakup or death or whatever, I want you to feel the energy that's trying to argue with that. And notice if you get really present, you can notice that's not you. That's a habit energy that you have been used to being identified with. So you think you are the one that lets go, yet you're the one who sees the one who lets go. And imagine if you could say to the one who's trying to hold on to the parents, you've done a great job and I love you. And you'll notice tears happen. 
And these tears that happen are the energy that is what you've been trying to prevent. The only thing you're trying to prevent is tears, right? But you think you're trying to prevent the outside thing, right? So imagine there's this thing outside and you're trying to prevent it from happening right? And you have a character that's trying to prevent it. But what happens if you love that character that's trying to prevent it? Then the character breaks off. Then what's, what's under it? The release of the energy that you were identified as, right? The release of the energy that was under this character. Your characters are created to prevent energy that are under your characters. Do you get that? You have a you that's keeping circumstances together. Why? Because there's energy under it that you're scared of. But you're only scared of it because you haven't looked at it. So I want you to notice the power, how much more power there is than any of your getting to the other side of, any of your effort. Notice the power of taking any energy, any person in your life, anything, any job, and find something you feel bitter about right? Let's do it with someone outside, someone from your past, someone from, you know, a job that you're mad at. Take a person you feel triggered by. Everyone's like, got it. Okay. And notice the you that's mad about it. And I want you to notice from this space of unconditional love, right? Can you, can you see the energy that's mad, right? And notice when that energy kicks in, that stuck energy that's mad, you probably usually just come up with a solution. Like next time I see them, I won't talk to them. You get what I'm saying? Or next time I see them, or I just won't answer them, or I'll block them, or I whatever. That's your, that's your letting the stuck little you run the show. But the you in the now isn't that stuck you. The you in the now doesn't have these opinions. The you in the now can just come up to this stuck thing and go, you've done an amazing job and I love you. And you'll realize you're not even letting go of the people. You're actually stuck to them because you're letting go of the you that's stuck to them. Are you getting that? You're letting go of the you that you became with them. You're let, <laughs> letting go of the you. Like I've noticed in letting go of people in my life, I'm much more letting go of the me that was stuck to those people more than the people themselves. Right. And only love can do that. So imagine like take, take something you feel bitter about and something you're upset with and someone you're annoyed with and feel the trigger, but then bring love from the now to the trigger, those people. Do. And notice this is a no-win game. This thing where you go, okay, you know, I got to do this. I got to do this. This, is, this doesn't get anywhere. It'll never work, right? It'll keep your, you might even change your circumstances with the person. Like you might forgive each other. Or you might fix something, whatever, but you're still stuck because you think you're letting go of them. But the real freedom is when you let go of the you that you were with them. Because you can't let go of a person nearly as much as you're here now on this new, much higher frequency to become present for the you that existed with that person, right? So this now loves and helps you just release easily, but it needs you to merge into the now right? This now right here loves you completely, forgives everything, but you, instead of dealing with the person and then keeping the you that was mad at the person or, or develop things with the person, instead, cry out that. Now you can, by the way, do that and still keep some people in your life. Like someone just said, I'm still trying to let go of my husband. If this is your current husband, and you're still with him. You can just be present for the you that maybe five years ago you created with your husband that you still aren't. Sometimes we have hard times in relationships because we keep seeing ourselves as the past us that we created with the person. But to really make a, a relationship work, you got to keep, and hopefully they do too, with love, purging what you were yesterday with that person, right? Because otherwise you get attached to what you used to be with that person. And now you're missing out on the now. You're becoming more what you were yesterday. So you get stuck to the person and you're missing out on the now. And the more you do this work, the more you're going to be like, 
The now is the only thing that's true. The now in this moment is just love. And the question, I just saw, I didn't even see the whole question, but it said, how do you stay present? Uh, how do you stay present for those triggers in the midst of a busy life and caring for children? I'm not saying you don't have a busy life, but that's an excuse. In other words, the belief is a busy life stops you from being able to connect to the moment. And that's impossible, right? You can decide to use a busy life as an excuse to not opt to connect to the now, but just a regular, even in the middle of work. I mean, I'm connecting to it now while I'm working, right? You can become present in the busy life. In other words, your busy life isn't bigger than the now, right? So you have a now right here and you can be present in the now. In fact, sometimes your attachment to a busy life is your avoidance of the now. It's just like you're this thing that's somewhere else because you're scared that you'd fall apart and you will into the now, right? So you're right here right now, right? And it's funny, it's funny to be like, I have a busy life and be able to be on this call, right? Like, and I'm here bringing this, right? So you can bring this to right now, but you can bring this into everything. You can bring this into your workout. You can bring this into a stressful day. You can bring this into parenting. You can bring this into an argument. You can be present and just be present. And you will notice, right, that these things will start to get smaller. The busyness will start to get smaller. The chaos, the arguments will get smaller. The addictions will get smaller. Everything's going to get smaller because the you that has the problems and the chaos and the busyness and the fear will dissolve eventually into this now. Eventually you can wait till you're dead and then live chaotically all the way there, or you can start to be that now. You can let the ego death fall right into you, right here. This now is the only thing true. And this, this now loves you. This now is just fine. This now purges, this now... Is the only thing true. So I want to offer you to leave what you're stuck on and then get connected to the now until you're more, you're more connected to the now so much that you create a space that's so big that whatever is stuck in your body can fall off, right? See, a lot of times what we've done in the past is we were more connected to the people, the thing, the career, whatever. And then we listen to the now just enough to make those things better. I'm going to offer you to actively choose a shift tonight, which is you connect more to the now than the people and let life do what it does. Think about this. If you're connected to the now and you're just bringing love and forgiveness through you, right? People who do not love you and forgive you will be worried about that light and leave. Yet you will find a match and you'll find people in your life that are doing that same kind of work that are an unconditionally loving presence, right? That you can just be love and you will find the match to you just being love. I don't mean a people pleaser or an overflow giver that doesn't receive. In fact, you'll find the match to this is just full receiving and giving from love, right? So Haley says, if we keep surrendering to the now and the people in the now hurt us, how do we proceed with love without the pain getting stuck? The answer is that won't happen, right? When you understand, let me give you an example. When you understand you're connected to the all that isness, okay? Unless we're talking literal physical abuse, okay? Which I get the hell out. <clears throat> but if you're connected to the now, there's nothing to be manipulated. There's nothing to be codependent on. There's nothing to feel abandoned because your connection is more to the now than to those people. You still can have those people in your life, but I'm offering you an idea of being in the world from love and not attachment. I know your whole life, we've only seen attachment, but we're, this is a world, this, this group is a world changing group right? Mike says they might move on. If someone must stay with me out of fear-based attachment, they are welcome to move on because I'm not here to fill a void 
for someone else's childhood. I'm here to bring the ultimate version of me and just sit back and be that and be space for whatever the match is to that versus what you're offering, Mike, that they might move on. If you're a place of love and they move on, they're not in that place of love that same way and that's fine, right? This is about you getting to a place where your connection is full as it is. Imagine you getting to a place. I want you to be in the idea that this isn't just a concept that feels, this isn't just a concept that feels good. And then, yeah, back to the real world. I want you to be with the idea that I'm talking from the real world and we're just used to living in the lie, right? One of the things I said in a video that was the opening video to uh, Beyond Expansion this weekend, and has gotten a crazy amount of views compared to our other videos. And it's just a talk, right? Is imagine if you're whole now. Imagine if you're whole now. Are you okay with being whole now? Now, I'm not saying there aren't patterns in here that mean like I'm all the way there. But the more I'm whole now, I notice that I cry almost every day. And what am I crying out? A pattern that said that I'm addicted, a pattern that said that I'm not enough, a pattern that said, right, this is, isn't real, a pattern that said these patterns of lack, of please fix me, of, of you know, don't abandon me, of I'm not enough, these patterns that are showing up there's only one thing that will actually heal those patterns. And it's not just finding a person that won't abandon you. Do you get that? If you have a deep-rooted fear of abandonment, the only solution is not find someone who won't abandon you. In fact, if that's the only solution, then the fear of abandonment is still there. You just have a circumstance that's blocking it from being released. There's only one way to heal your fear of abandonment, your codependency, your avoidant pattern, your rejection, your guilt the now. There's only one way, your deep connection to the now. So much that you're more connected to the now. Like notice that the, what, tell me if you see what I mean by this, you're more connected to circumstances and you sometimes connect to the now, right? The you, like the identity you probably identify with is I have my job. I have my relationship. I have my kids. And sometimes I connect to the now I'm offering a world that's the opposite of that, where your highest connection is to the now, and you bring that to your kids, you bring that to your relationship. And if someone doesn't like that, we create space for someone that will, that you will find the match to that. Imagine you as a place of whole, because we've just gotten used to a world where we find lack, and then we parent from lack, we work from lack, we find jobs we hate out of lack, we get shit relationships out of lack, we create everything out of the idea that we are lack first. That's just normalized in our world. But it's dying, isn't it? It doesn't work now right? Here's a question Kristen R has, and I'm going to offer you how many of your questions are the reverse. How do you do that on massive sleep deprivation when your triggers come up? You connected to the now will help you sleep. You connected to your anxiety or your resistance of your anxiety will keep you awake. The reason we have a hard time sleeping sometimes is because a pattern is trying to be pulled out of you. And if you are identified with the pattern, right? You're trying to keep it. You're, you're in a place where you think it's you that's coming out. Be with the idea that everything that's triggered in your body is a pattern on its way out. If you're connected to the now enough, you will only see life that way. You start to go, you'll freak out. You'll have hard times. You'll see a pattern there and then finally go, oh, that's a pattern on its way out. Right. And you, you get connected to a now that is so profound and so loving. And you get to a place where eventually we're going to work on this. Right. You're more the now than the patterns. Your life will just be gentle tears every other day as you get more and more and more here than the you that's always trying to get there. A byproduct of you being fully connected to the now would be sleep. Because patterns would be cried out frequently, and you would be here, and you would be rested because you're connected to the now.
You can't motivate yourself into sleep. It's very hard to high vibration yourself into sleep. It's you connected to the now. And for Anita who said, huh, well, that would be great. I'm here to offer you this is a reality that is available. And you can slowly at the weight of, you know, at, at the weight, at the pace of losing weight, right? At the, like, if you, you have to go to the gym for a year to get really fit, we're just going to do the connecting to the now a year until we're more and more and more than now that circumstances can arise as the mirror of the now that we are being versus we are the circumstances who grab onto the now just enough to get through our circumstances. Screw that. That day is over and life will make sure of it. So if you do not connect more to the now, your circumstances that you're identified with will be like fire in your body. They're going to be coming to life. Your fear of regret, your fear of abandonment, all that shit, your fear of um, making a mistake, your fear, uh, like all those fears, all the guilt, you might notice that those things are louder than they used to be in your life. Why is that? Because they're right at the surface. The things that are really loud in your life, like the, the, there's a reason why it's now just for some people, full-blown anxiety. Some people, it's a gradual release. It's really loud and then tears and really loud and then release. Some people, there's just no looking at it. So they're just addiction on top of addiction, on top of addiction, on top of addiction until they just disappear, right? <laughs> there's right now, you can actively connect to the now, which is more you. The now is more you, right? You have the circumstances to tell yourself that you are the small you, right? I am a mother. I am a brother. I am a father. I am this job. I am this money. Okay. Right. Now, I'm not saying these things can't exist in your life. But if they are you, you will have an attachment to how you look as a parent, right? Versus you just being connected to the now and accidentally parenting much more because you're connected to love, right? Like you connected to love will be a better parent than the you that's trying to look good as a parent or not make a mistake as a parent, right? You will be bringing a higher and higher frequency every day to your children, right? If you're identified as I am this, so I better do it right, now you're enslaved to that pattern and you're keeping a false you alive that the universe is trying to purge. You're keeping a false you alive. So Ariana says, how do you connect to the now aside from meditation? Well, it starts to become life, right? I notice it during conversations. Oh, like I'll just be like, oh, I see that I'm in a high right now. I get present for it. Oh, I feel that I'm triggered right now. I am just, and I, and I just get present, but I don't just get present till the trigger's gone. I get present for a long time. And so now it's starting to be most of my day that I'm kind of in the middle of something. I notice a feeling and I'm just like, I could be at a restaurant. I could be eating something, I could be working out. And I just notice the all that is all the time. I start to notice the space that's all around me all the time. So it's not only actively going, I meditate for an hour. It's just like now, right? Now I'm talking to you and I'm just feeling a space that's going through the walls right now, right? And I'm doing that at the same time, right? So this does nothing in a negative to your busy day. It does amazing positive things, right? Absolutely with feeling the tense, everything that comes up is on its way out, but you need to be present for it. Kyle, do you never think of the future? I think of the future all the time, but I still know that's a pattern. So I will let a giddy me, like sometimes I'm excited about something and I'll have a giddy me that just shows up and there's another me. I always see it like a kid. This is what I do. I often think of the future and sometimes it'll be in a negative and sometimes it's in a positive, but I, I also know that's a pattern. And sometimes I feel like the kids going swimming and I can picture when I was a kid and I would go swimming and my mom would stand on the dock and tell me you're going too far out, right? That mom is the now, right? Hey, you're allowed to be excited, but just so you know, I'm here from this present space with you, reminding you that your excitement is great 
and also the now is here, right? So there is an, ex and sometimes there's fear about the excitement, but I have another me that goes, oh, that's triggering something. That's showing me something that's under it. There is, I've yet to find a fear so far that I couldn't dig into a deeper understanding and then often cry it out, right? Oh, I thought that because I felt abandoned from that one time dad said this, to give you an example, right? But the more I do this work, the more I don't even do that. The more I do this work, I'm just like, now, 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 right? And, and this, is, this has been kind of amplified starting this weekend. This weekend felt like we went through a new level where I just feel like I wiped out more of the overcomer, the high vibration. There's some still there, but there's more now. More now. And once you see that, you can't unsee that. So even if you go way off, you have an, an understanding that there's, there's more now, right now. Feel that, feel this now that's just going through all of us. And instead of just kind of feeling it for a second and then going back to your busy life, make it the truth. Don't make your busy life the truth. I'm not saying still don't do anything you need to do, but don't make your busy life more true than now. Your pain is you make any circumstance bigger than now. That's it. And once you sit with it long enough, the busy life and the attachment to it shift, right? And from the now, you bring your now into your life. It will get less busy and be more effective. There will be more results and more freedom and more joy and more everything from the now than you staying the small self attached to the busy life, avoiding the now. One is a transitory small story. The other is a permanent true story. Would you rather connect to the constant fear of something that's inevitably transitory anyway? The thing that you're addicted to is passing. So you can still be with it, but be with what's real and bring that to it. What's real here? Marissa says, what's the difference between overanalyzing and being aware in the now? Overanalyzing is the ego. I wouldn't even say, even though I did say it, I wouldn't even say being aware in the now, be the now. And you be the now starting by hear the now. Feel the now. And I want you to see the now is all that is. Right here. And be there for a pattern that was worried about someone's opinion or your money situation in three weeks from now or what someone said or what you're going through or just be there for a pattern that might be going through it and bring now love to it. Now love, not in love, not addictive, romantic love, actual love. Feel your heart. Feel the space in the now versus the outcome that you're trying to get through versus the high that you're trying to get to now. <laughs>